In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the temperature sensor TMP36. I'm going to show you how to implement effectively a low pass filter via an ARUM, okay, so in the digital form onto this Arduino Uno board. So you can see the contents up here. So we'll go through the hardware, go through the ARUM design, so the low pass filter in the digital form, and then finally summary. So after this lecture, you're about to obtain measured temperature data from the TMP36 sensor and undertake the process of filtering noisy measured data using a low pass filter. This process will be undertaken using the MATLAB and Simulink software. So in terms of the hardware, you can see the sensor given here. So this is a low voltage temperature sensor, TMP36, where you can see here the one pin here effectively is, is voltage in. You can see the ground, and then finally you can see the analog um, pin, which I've denoted here V subscript out. What we're going to use this temperature sensor is we're going to use an Arduino Uno. For this, you'll need a USB cable because you'll need to be able to connect the um, Arduino to the to the computer. You'll need one of these temperature sensors, and you'll need three times male to male wires because the setup that we're going to use, as you can see here, requires initially five volts being supplied here. So five, five volts potential difference hit being supplied here to the to the to the breadboard here. This means that the the breadboard here is live across here. And then you can see here our ground here. So this ground, this black wire here, is fed back to the ground pin on the Arduino Uno. What you'll recall is that this analog bit here for the, the analog pin here from the temperature sensor is effectively this blue wire here. So it's going from the middle pin, which is the analog, and then I'm feeding it to the analog in on the Arduino board. And I'm feeding it to A4. Okay, so A4 is where the, the effect of the analog um, in is. An analog signal is just like your continuous signal, uh, where effectively you'll just sample that every sample interval. The voltage input um, for this temperature sensor is 2.7 volts to 5 volts, and it has an operating temperature of between minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 125 degrees Celsius. So in terms of the algorithm design, so initially you'll need you'll have to understand how the Arduino Uno works. So if you if you're struggling at this point, watch some some of my earlier lectures or videos on, or look at some of my content on the Arduino Uno. So you're aware that for the analog it's 10 bits. So for analog um, signals it's 10 bits. So we use an analog from pin four. It's 10 bit. So that effectively means we have 1,000 and 24 different levels that effectively the value can be. Those 1,024 levels effectively range between the value of zero and um, five volts. So that a number coming out of here that you can see I've just drawn the arrow is gonna be between zero and 1,023 because zero is, is one of our levels and then 1,023 is our final level, and that effectively there is 1,024 levels. So say, for example, we have a number 150 output from pin 4. Okay, so 150 comes out there. Okay, that's great. What we can divide that by is 1,023, as you can see the calculation here, which is going to give me 0 0.1466, which basically puts me in this ratio of, of a number between 0 and 1. What I then want to do is, as you can see here in this game block, I then want to multiply by 5 because the supply voltage is 5 volts. And what that is then going to do is then going to convert the that number, original number, into a voltage. Where you can see here the value is 0 0.7330 volts. What I've done here as well is there's a game block here. So initially you're going to have to drop and drag a game block over, change it to 5 over 1023 for the reason why I've just explained, get this analog input, and if you click on that and change the pin number to 4 and change the sample time to 0 0.01, that effectively means that it will sample um, data from that temp from the signal temperature, um, well, the, the signal coming from the temperature sensor 
every 0.01 seconds it will capture some information so then if we move it on to the next part so we've covered up to this part so far what um, you have to at this point is look at the data sheet so here you can see the data sheet for the low voltage temperature sensors and you can see the particular sensor that we're looking at if you, you can find this data sheet on um, Google so if you put that into Google you'll be able to find the PDF and what you'll be aware of is that the you'll come to a table where it's got this volt offset voltage for this particular sensor and you'll notice that the 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 offset voltage is 0 0.5 we effectively have that offset um, value there because that's effectively to account for the initial minus 40 degrees Celsius that we had. So it effectively enables the temperature sensor to account for the for the negative um, temperature values. So we do this here. So I'm going to put a sum injunction here. So in Simulink, put a sum injunction here, add this constant block here and put a value of 0 0.5 and then here put a minus value. And what you'll notice is it'll, it just lowers the value now, the voltage that's coming after the summing, um, the, the summing junction here. The final step to do then is to take into account um, this column here. So the out, the above value, so that value um, that we've just determined here, is then multiplied by 100, as you can see in this gain block here, um, as TMP36 sensor has an output scale factor of 10 millivolts per degrees Celsius. So 10 millivolts, so milli 10 to the power of minus 3 volts per degree Celsius. So example, that number there needs to be multiplied by 1 degree Celsius and then over 0 0.013, um, 0.01 volts. And that there gives us what our temperature um, reading is. So in this case, it would be 23.3 degrees Celsius. At the moment, we haven't I haven't spoken about this discrete filter here, but I will do it in a minute. But what you'll see is the signal here. This signal here is effectively the signal given in this window here, in this little kind of um, in the scope given here. So the scope here and obviously what we're looking at, at the moment is we're not considering the discrete filter so if we do consider the discrete filter now that's what we're going to do what this discrete filter does is this this is effectively what we're implementing is a rc circuit so resistor capacitor but we're not implementing it um we're not implementing it in terms of the actual physical hardware we're now going to implement this in terms of a actual um, in terms of an algorithm. So what this RC for circuit will do, so a low pass filter, is it'll effectively, if you've got high frequency signals, it will reject the high frequency signals, effectively stop them from passing through. So if you recall from um, some of the earlier content hopefully you've watched, where we looked at, for example, the time solution. Or if we or the time solution of audio differential equation for an RC circuit, or in this case here you can see the transfer function for the RC circuit. Both are kind of um, kind of nice because they both give you the same sort of information. So RC is a time constant and that'll effectively tell you how long it takes for the system to reach steady state. So five time constants, you're pretty much in steady state. Um, so in, in this case, what I've done is I've used MATLAB here. So you can see in this box that I'm just putting around here. What I've got here is a MATLAB script. So I've got the usual command clear, CLC, close all. So that will just clear the command window, close all the, any kind of uh, graphs that will reopen and clear the workspace. What I'm defining here is, is a value uh, for my resistor of 1,000 ohms. My um, capacitor, 1,000 times... 10 to the power of minus 6 farads. Then, because I told you the time constant is effectively RC, so if you multiply resistor by capacitor, that's our time constant. And in this case, the time constant, because if we multiply the resistor capacitor, is going to equal 1. So that's effectively telling us that the system is going to take around 5 seconds to get to steady state. Okay, because if you remember, 5 time constants, you're at 99% of the final system response. Um, so that's pretty much that's what's informing us. G here equals transfer function one 
over tau over 1, which is effectively just um, this trans function here or alternative form here. What I'm now going to do is discretize this because what I want is I want the discrete time equivalent of the continuous time trans function. So in this case, G denotes my um, continuous time trans function. What I want is my discrete time trans function. So here I define what sample interval I'm picking. So 0 0.01. The reason why I'm picking that sample, well, re now is because that's sample interval I've pretty much been, I was using earlier. You know, when I originally was sampling the data from the temperature sensor. GD, so I'm going to use that notation. So G for trans function and D for discrete is equal to C to D, so continuous to discrete. So this is effectively Matt, I'm telling MATLAB that I want to do continuous discrete on G, which is my continuous trans function, subject to the sample interval of T subscript S, where T subscript S was defined here as 0 0.01. By default, it will use a zero to whole method to discretize that um, continuous time trans function. So if I was to discretize that, the transfer function I would end up is given by the one in the discrete filter that I've given up here. So I'd end up with my numerator value being 0 0.00995, and then my uh, denominator value 1 minus 0 0.99 and then z to the minus 1. So that there's my discrete filter. So it's my effectively my equivalent to the continuous time trans function um, whereby the discrete filter effectively captures the information from the continuous time model at the sample points so every 0 0.01 seconds so if i was to then um, get the discrete filter from simulink so from the library browser if i was to double click on that you can see here where i've added the numerator values and i've added the denominator values and also make sure, this is an easy step to remember, to forget, make sure you specify the sample time that you've selected. Okay, it's very important because if you don't select that, it's gonna fall over. If you're inconsistent with the sampling times you select, it's also gonna cause you a few issues. So that there is my, effectively my, um, is my. So what I have here is two videos that I'm gonna show you. So the initial video is showing effectively the capacitor charging up. So you can see here it takes around five seconds you can see here for this capacitor to charge up which is what we expected because the time constant of the the rc circuit was one so five time constants is roughly a steady state so you can see that five seconds to reach steady state then what you'll see in this second video is the blue which is your high frequency signals and then you can see the yellow which is the filtered data or the filtered signal. So you can see in terms of control, if you were to get onto implementing control on, uh, from this measurement, the yellow is much better because it's kind of got, it's, um, you haven't got these high frequency signals. So for example, if you were to introduce a proportional integral derivative controller in practice, whereby you need to use the signals, that would give you quite erratic control, the blue signal, the, the yellow one would give you much, much better control. You could, in terms of the effect where I initially told you I had this lag, you could reduce obviously the time that it takes for the system for effectively the capacitor to charge. You could um, effectively do that by reducing the time constants, the RC value. However, the trade-off is that the, new, the noise won't be filtered quite as um, well. Because if you recall the first five seconds, you effectively really haven't got any information um, because you're waiting for the capacitor to charge. In summary, the low voltage TMP36 temperature sensor has been used with an Arduino to capture data. So it's been initially used to capture data from the temperature sensor, and then we've used Simulink effectively to develop a signal processing algorithm to convert the data outputted from the temperature sensor into a physical value, i.e. degree Celsius. As part of that process, we've implemented a low pass filter in the effectively as an algorithm which is based on an rc circuit so resistor capacitor which is effectively the time constant um, and time constant giving us information in terms of one time constant five time constant being effectively 99 percent of the final value of the system and that giving us kind of information in terms of how the filter is going to work that's been implemented to filter out high frequency signals so effectively implemented that to to reduce out high frequency signals and then thereby to create something that's useful for control. 
So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please contact me.